Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, I will be introducing logic. So here's the do now. You encounter three gentlemen, one wearing a green jacket, one wearing a black jacket, and one wearing a white jacket. Isn't it interesting, starts Mr. Green, that even though our last names are green, black, and white, in some order, that none of us are wearing a jacket that is the same color as our last name. So what? scoffs the man in the white jacket. So who has what color jacket? So this is a typical scenario and question that you encounter in logic. How would you solve this problem? Well, the best way to solve this is to organize our thoughts in a table. So what is one condition that we know from the do now? Well, that none of them are wearing a jacket that is the same color as their last names. For example, Mr. Green cannot wear a green jacket, so we put an X here. Mr. Black is not wearing a black jacket, and Mr. White is not wearing a white jacket either. So what else do we know here? So it says here, so what, scuffs the man in the white jacket. So it seems here that Mr. Green and the man in the white jacket are two different people. So the question is, can Mr. Green wear a white jacket? Well, obviously not, because it's the other person who's wearing a white jacket that we don't know yet. So we can put an X on Mr. Green with the white jacket. So that leaves us with Mr. Green wearing a black jacket, okay? So what about the rest? How can we figure out what, for example, Mr. Black and Mr. White are wearing? Well, if you look at Mr. White at the table, he's not wearing a black jacket because Mr. Green is wearing a black jacket already. So we can put an X here. So that leaves Mr. White with the green jacket, okay? And Mr. Black is left with the white jacket, okay? Because the green jacket and the black jacket are already taken. So therefore, we can put an X here for Mr. Black for the green jacket. And that is basically the answer. Mr. Green is wearing a black jacket, Mr. Black is wearing a white jacket, and Mr. White is wearing a green jacket. So how were we able to come to this conclusion? Well, we simply applied some type of thinking, which is called logical thinking. And hence, this is the introduction to logic. So how do we define logic? So according to the definition, logic is the science of reasoning allowing us to determine if an argument is either valid or invalid. Often in mathematics or specifically in logic, uh, we use the statement true for valid and for invalid, we use the statement false, okay? Now, unfortunately, in the real world, in life, Arguments are not just true or false. So there could be other types of arguments. Something could be both true and false at the same time. Or we cannot determine if an argument is true or false. And that's why we assign specific statements to these types of, of sentences. So let me give you an example. Determine if each of these sentences are valid invalid or uncertain. How do you know? So as you can see, an argument could be true or false, but sometimes it's also uncertain. So in this case, for number one, the Brooklyn Bridge is in New York. Well, definitely that is a valid argument. So we write valid here. Okay, we can also call it true. What about the capital of California is Los Angeles? Well, it's definitely invalid.
because the capital of California is Sacramento. So here we're going to write false or invalid. What about 19 minus 2? Is it valid, invalid, or uncertain? Well, if you think about this, it doesn't say is equal to 17 and then it becomes valid or is equal to, let's say, 5, in which case it's invalid. So we really don't know. So in this case, we write uncertain. Okay, so let me fix that. Okay, what about 5x is equal to 10? Well, that is also uncertain because it all depends what x is. Okay, so we write uncertain. Uncertain. And finally, Jenny found it behind the sofa. Well, that is also uncertain, right? Because we don't know what that is. Did she find what she was looking for or did she find something else? So again, we write here uncertain. Why, why do we have this type of example? Because this example introduces us to three types of statements in mathematics, specifically in logic. The statements are, number one, mathematical sentences, okay? So with mathematical sentences, uh, you just state a fact, and the fact is either true or false or we can use valid or invalid, the same exact thing. The second type of statement is a non-mathematical statement or sentence, okay? Uh, you cannot really determine if something is true or false, uh, it's just uncertain, it's just one of those statements that does not have any meaning. And finally, the third statement is an open sentence. Usually, open sentences contain variable such as X or it, and so on. So let's go back to our previous example and see if we can identify now which type of statement it is. So the first example here, the Brooklyn Bridge is in New York. So what type of sentence is that? If you go back, we have the three statements, a mathematical statement, non-mathematical statement, and an open sentence. So which one is that? Well, if you think about the Brooklyn Bridges in New York, it's stating a fact. And the fact could now be either true or false, okay? So the first example, a mathematical sentence, and in this case, the mathematical sentence is true. What about the second example? The capital of California is Los Angeles. Well, that is also a mathematical sentence, but it turns out to be false. It's stating a fact, but the fact is false, okay? Now, the third sentence is a question. Did you have a soccer practice today? So the question is, is it stating a fact? The answer is no. So it's not a mathematical sentence. So we're left with non-mathematical sentence or an open sentence. But remember that in an open sentence, you have a variable. Is there a variable in this sentence? The answer is no. So it's just simply a non-mathematical sentence. Then we have 19 minus 2. Well, here also, we don't have a fact. We don't have a variable. So that is also considered a non-mathematical sentence. Then we have 5x equal to 10. Okay, now we see a variable here. And since we have a variable, that is called an open sentence. And the variable here is just x. Now, what about the last statement? Jenny found it behind the sofa. What type of sentence is that? Well, again, it's not stating anything mathematical, uh, but it seems that here we have an an open sentence, right? As a matter of fact, we do, because the variable is just it. Now, there is a connection between open sentences and mathematical sentences, okay? Do you see the connection here? Well, everything depends 
on the variable in an open sentence. For example, if you take 5x is equal to 10, okay, so uh, now it all depends what the x is. For example, if, let me write this in, if x is equal to 2, then we have a true statement. So I'm going to write it as capital T, as true. Uh, now if x, and I'm just going to come up with an example. Let's say if x is equal to 7. Well, in that case, it becomes false. Okay? So as you can see that open sentences could also be true or false depending on what the variable is. Okay? The goal of logic is to identify as many truths and false as possible. And, who, and whatever is uncertain is not being considered, okay? And that is really the beauty of mathematics. Something is either true or false. So let's look at another example uh, where another concept emerges from this. Uh, for example, it says here the Brooklyn Bridge is in New York. Well, we know that this statement is actually true, so I'm gonna write a T over here. How do you make this statement false? Well, we can just make it false by saying that it's not in New York, okay? But now in this case, the statement is false, okay? It's still a mathematical sentence, but it's false. So we can actually generalize this rule, okay? Basically, the negation of a true statement becomes false, okay? So basically, we're negating true, it becomes false. So what will happen if we take the false statement from the beginning and negate that one? Well, then in that case, it becomes true. So the symbol for negation, let me write it here, negation. So the symbol for negation in logic is this, okay? It's like a, a wave sign, somehow like this. So that's a negation. And we can actually summarize this rule in something called the truth table. So here's a summary of the negation in a table. Let's say you have a statement P, okay? So P here could be any statement. For example, the Brooklyn Bridge is in New York or uh, the capital of California is Los Angeles. Now, if the statement P is true and you negate it, that becomes false, okay? And then if you have a false statement to begin with and you negate that one, that becomes true, okay? For example, if you take the capital of California is Los Angeles, that is a false mathematical statement. How do you negate it? Well, you just say that the capital of California is not Los Angeles and then it becomes true, okay? Now, these types of tables here are called truth tables. In the next coming lessons, we will become more familiar with truth tables because we will be developing truth tables for various statements in logic. Okay, so that's basically it for today's lesson. It was just the introduction to logic. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to post a comment to this YouTube video, okay? Otherwise, have a great day.